good day everyone and welcome to this lecture uh, uh, we have started the settling section in the previous uh, lecture and we studied that uh, how to find out the terminal velocity in the discrete settling zone and uh, before that we studied uh, the different types of uh, uh, settling zones which are possible so it may be discrete settling it may be hindered settling it may be other types of settling behaviors which are possible. So, uh, we started with discrete settling and finding out the terminal velocity uh, because that helps in determining uh, the ultimate velocity with, with which any particle having some particular density and of some particular size how it will settle down. So, those things we determined in the previous lecture. So, in the settling that there are two important parameters that we come to know. One is the what is the diameter of the particle that we are targeting to settle and separate out. And second thing is that what is the density of that particle Th that is also very important. So, uh, some particles may be fluffy in nature, some may be more denser in nature. So, more denser particles settle out very easily as compared to a fluffy particles which have lesser density or otherwise. Second thing is that what is the density of the liquid also that is important, but most often since we are studying the wastewater treatment. So, the density of liquid will virtually be constant because in wastewater we generally consider only dilute solutions where some pollutants are present up to some dilute concentration. So, under those concentrations the wastewater may be taken as water and the density of water and viscosity of water is good enough for calculating further. Now, there is lot of uh, similarity is there uh, in settling in wastewater or water treatment with respect to other settling behaviors which are there or clarification behavior which are there uh, in uh, particulate technologies. So, uh, in many process and chemical industries these methods are used for separating out different particles uh, having different density or different size. So, there is a uh, lot of similarity is there and those concepts are used in wastewater treatment or water treatment also. So, there is a separation of solid particles. Uh, there are two basic methodologies are there. Uh, they may be classified as sizing or sorting. So, sizing is like uh, where the density is constant, but they have same particle size. So, we have like uh, some grains which are there and they have same particle size, but they have density difference. So, those we can separate out using the method which is called as sizing. And similarly, it is possible to have a uh, size is same, but uh, the density difference is there. So, under that condition we can still separate them out and they are called as sorting. So, th both the methods uh, uh, these two methods are commonly used in the particulate separation methods and these methods can further be extended in the wastewater treatment also. And how they work out little bit idea we can get from the terminal velocity equation that we uh, calculated in the previous lecture. Now, if suppose we have two particles which are settling down at same terminal velocity, somehow there may be a difference in the uh, density or there may be a difference in the uh, diameter, but somehow there is they are settling down at the same rate. So, under those conditions uh, if u t a is equal to u t b, so under that condition settling ratio will be defined by size of a divided by size of b for equal falling and actually if we go further we will be finding that d a by d b can be given by this particular equation and where there is a frictional factor also that what is the frictional factor of uh, uh, particle a and what is the frictional factor of particle b. So, both density and frictional factors become very important. Now, under this condition these frictional factors they vary depending upon whether the settling is laminar or turbulent. So, if we go for laminar suppose the settling zone is laminar. So, a Stokes law reason will be applicable and under that condition F d a by F 
D B can be given by this relationship. So, 24 divided by Reynolds number and that will be true and that can further be written like D B by D A. Now, if we substitute this F D A by F D B in this equation which is here like. So, we substitute D B by D A here and so actually if we sort it out this become uh, this particular equation comes out. So, we can sort it out still as per the uh, diameter of both and it will be like rho a minus rho f uh, where rho is the density of the uh, particle rho b is also density of particle b rho f is the density of the water or the fluid. So, in this wastewater case it will be for the water. So, this is there. So, this is one equation where settling zone is laminar, but suppose the settling zone is turbulent. So, under that condition F d A by F d B is 1. So, under that condition the this is directly proportional. Now, we can see for the previous equation it was under root in this case it will be not under root it is directly. So, relationship is little different. So, if the settling ratio is equal to that compound from these equations separation by classification cannot be done. So, if somehow we are finding that the settling ratio is equal to that compound for these equations so if if we find that ok these are exactly same. So, it may not be possible. So, we will understand it little later more in detail. Then there is a possibility of hindered settling also hindered settling that uh, where the settling of one particle is hindered by another particle. So, we have group of particle we will study that more in detail little later in the next lecture may be, but little bit idea only has been given. So, under that condition the terminal velocity can be given by this ok uh, this is multiplied together ok and then n the coefficients can be uh, for Newton's law region they will be different and for Stokes law region they will be different. So, uh, this is there for hindered settling. Now, going further replacing there is this is the one method through which we can find out the settling velocity there is another method through which we can find out the settling velocity for hindered settling uh, is that we replace the bulk density by nu b where nu b is found out using this equation ok and within this we have to use the sorry nu b is replaced by bulk viscosity to bulk vis whatever is the viscosity we replace by term nu b and similarly bulk density is replaced by rho b and these rho b can be found out using this equation where e is the uh, the voidage which is there. So, that we have to find out and similarly bulk viscosity can be found out using this particular equation and if we both are known we can put in this equation and find out the uh, actual uh, settling velocity in the hindered settling zone. So, uh, through this also we can find out, but the questions or the related to this uh, hindered settling will be doing little later and now we will start thinking that how the sedimentation basin how any sedimentation basin is designed. So, uh, there are certain assumptions in designing the ideal sedimentation basin. So, generally it will be based on the terminal velocity certainly and there are many assumptions that are taken and these assumptions are like uh, we have discrete particle settling uh, which is there uh, we will assume discrete particle settling. Then we have four zones in the basin inlet, outlet, sludge and settling that we will discuss it uh, now. After that there is we also assume that at the inlet in the settling zone there is a uniform horizontal velocity that is the distribution of the flow is even uh, at the inlet and that is very uh, this is the assumption that we consider uh, in designing the ideal sedimentation basin. Now, along with the inlet we also assume that there is a even distribution of flow leaving the settling zone. So, uh, there is at inlet also at exit also both are we have uniform distribution of flow. Then uniform distribution of particles throughout the depth of the inlet zone uh, 
up to the end of settling zone. So, that this is uniform distribution of particles is another assumption that we take. Uh, then particles that enter the sludge zone are assumed to be captured and they remain in the sludge zone. That means, whichever particle that enter the sludge zone, we assume that they will be remaining there, they are not coming out and re-entering the settling zone. So, this is there. Particles that enter the outlet zone are not removed from the water. So, uh, from are sorry are removed from the water this is assumed. So, particles that enter the outlet zone are removed from the water this is being assumed. So, the, this is this is coming out and they are going into the water. So, uh, they are not getting removed and they are going they are not removed from the water, but they are they are going into the exit. So, that means they are not settling down in a way they are not removed is correct, but they are going along with the exit of the water. So, that is there. Now, let us discuss the sedimentation zone. So, this is the sedimentation zone. So, water is entering from here. We have a buffer which is actually causing the water to get distributed and we are assuming that there is a uniform flow in this. So, this is the inlet zone. We have a settling zone here. After that, the particles which settle down, they go into the sludge zone and then we have outlet zone. So, the particles which are not going into the sludge zone, they are going into the outlet zone and these outlet zone particles are not further removed. They will be going out along with the effluent. So, that we, so this is the influent and whatever will be coming out that will be going effluent. So, this is these are the zones and there are certain assumptions which I already we have discussed uniform flow here, uniform flow out the from the sludge zone nothing comes out. So, this is not assumes that not, no of the, none of the particles are coming out. So, this is the sedimentation zones which are there. Now, similarly for a flow clarifier. So, this is like horizontal flow clarifier we have these zones. Similarly, for a flow clarifier also the inlet is from the top okay, and then it is getting distributed from here and the particles get settled down particles those particles which will be there actually they will be settling down and reaching the sludge zone and ultimately the treated water containing smaller amount of particles will be going into the outlet zone and going out. So, this is there. So, we have horizontal flow clarifier, we have up flow clarifier. So, we will go further and discuss this. Now, settling in up flow clarifier occurs like this. So, in the up flow clarifier the particles laden with water enter the this is like up flow from here. There can be other designs also which is like here, here the particles are at entering at the bottom and they are containing both particles and liquid. Now, uh, they are entering at the bottom. Now, what will happen as the liquid at the bottom of the clarifier, the velocity of the rising water is greater than the settling velocity of the particles. So, that means the velocity of the velocity of liquid is greater than the settling velocity of the settling velocity or terminal velocity of the particles. So, this is there under this condition. Now, what will happen that with time the liquid will move very quickly up and settling velocity because of the settling velocity uh, uh, and because the area is increasing this is in conical shape. So, with time the liquid velocity will decrease. Okay and it will reach to the condition where it matches with the settling velocity and in fact after some time it will become opposite. So, under those conditions the as the water rises the area through which it passes is in increasing because of the cone shape of the clarifier. So, because of the cone shape the area is going to increase and as per the continuity principle we know very well the continuity principle. So, like q 1 a 1 is equal to q 2 a 2. So, under that condition the flow rate because the a 2 is much greater than the a 1. So,
so under that condition the flow rate or the velocity the particle decreases i sorry this is v1 a1 so this is there v2 a2 so q1 is equal to q2 flow rate is same but uh, velocity into area is multiplied so because of that the velocity of water decreases at it rises so under that condition the velocity can be given by this because area variation is there now when the velocity of the particle remains as such but the velocity of the liquid is getting decreased and as soon as the area further increases the upward velocity of the particle liquid uh, becomes less than that of the downward velocity of the particle and because of the that the particle will remain in the tank and the clear water will leave and with time actually the particle settle down to these zones uh, which is ultimately the particle will settle down and these settled particles are removed from this side so uh, the with area actually because of change in area and because of which the liquid velocity decreases uh, as compared to the settling velocity of the solids and as a consequence of that the separation happens so in the design of a flow clarifier the area at the top of the cone that achieves the separation velocity says the top of the cone so this is very important we keep the area the top of the cone area is very important and uh, above that there are weirs and from which the water overflows uh, as a clear water into other zones from which it goes out so the upward water velocity that will enable the separation of the water from the particle it is called as overflow rate so we will be further discussing this since it is the rate at which the water overflows the top of the tank into the weir so that's why it is called as overflow rate now overflow rate is also called as the hydraulic surface loading or the surface loading so there are different terms and it may have the unit like it has the unit a meter cube per day per meter square in place of per day it may be anything it is like uh, q by a the area is of q by a where q is the flow rate and a is the area so this is the hydraulic surface loading or surface loading how it is called the overflow rate theoretically the efficiency of removal of discretely settling particles in a settling tank depends upon the settling velocity of the particle and the overflow rate so these two become very important parameters in the uh, sedimentation basin design now we'll study understand that how overflow rate can be calculated for a rectangular horizontal flow sedimentation basin so this is being assumed so we have a sedimentation basin which is having a height h length l and width w so this is there so this is height uh, this is length and this is width which is w now it is having a settling velocity of vs so we are assuming that the particles the target particle which we are trying to remove suppose the target particle is 100 micron so for 100 micron we can calculate the settling velocity okay so uh, we we want it to be settled down so for that condition uh, assuming that vs is the settling velocity so a particle must have a settling velocity enough what is the basic criteria a particle must have a settling velocity great enough so that it reaches the bottom of the tank during time t0 uh, in which the water remains in the tank so suppose this term log is called as detention time so suppose there is some time within which we want the particle to settle down so suppose the particle is entering at that top of the tank if and we want the particle this is the particle so we want this to be settle down this much distance uh, within the time the particle reaches the length l so any uh, will be having two velocities one is the settling velocity another is the whatever is the flow velocity of the particle inside this basin 
So, we want this particle to reach the bottom that means, it will move like this, it, it is settling down and moving also. So, we want to reach the settling zone before actually it comes out. So, this particle will 100 percent get removed. If any this particle size enters in the middle of the tank also, then, then also it will certainly get removed. So, this is possible. So, th we always start from the top of the tank. So, the basic design is for this condition where it enters at the top of the tank, but we want to settle it before it reaches uh, out of the it goes out of the settling zone. So, this is there. Now, assume T is the detention time for which the, a suspension is detained in the settling tank which is having a height h length l and width w already we discussed this. Also assume that v h there will be some confusion there is a another term which is kept as v h later on, but that is called scour velocity we will discuss it later, but right now we are assuming that velocity is horizontal velocity is v h the v t or v s is the terminal settling velocity of the target particle. So, uh, these are the two uh, assumptions we are making. Now, what is the cross sectional area of the tank? So, this cross sectional area is like h we are assuming sorry capital. So, we are here h into w. So, that will be the cross sectional area whatever is the height into width and similarly surface area of the tank is length into w. So, this is length and this is into w. So, this is the cross sectional layer, uh, this is the surface area of the tank. Now, let us start. So, if suppose q is the flow rate of the water or waste water into the tank. So, q is the flow rate. So, we can write like this a cross sectional area into horizontal velocity. So, that means and this cross sectional area is like height into width into horizontal velocity. Since the target particle should not resuspend during its flow along the length of the tank. So, that means it should be the detention time can also be calculated as t should be equal to length the length which is moving. So, this is the length that we saw. So, this is the length. So, for time of detention the length should be can can time of detention can be calculated as l divided by horizontal velocity. So, this is the time in which it will remain in the horizontal direction like. Similarly, the target particle is settling down also. So, during that time before it reaches the outlet zone uh, its uh, detention time can also be calculated how it is settling down. So, h is the height and u t is the terminal velocity. So, we divide h by u t to get the terminal velocity. So, this is there. Now, if you combine together both t together this t and this t. So, we have two t together one is t is equal to uh, l by v h. So, l by v h the horizontal velocity this is equal to h by u t terminal velocity. So, same has been given here and from this equation we can calculate the u t to be equal to h by l into v h which is given here. So, we are starting with terminal velocity is equal to h by l into v h. Now, what we do is that we multiply numerator and denominator both by width. So, if you multiply by width we get this particular equation. Now, remember width into height into horizontal velocity is equal to the uh, flow rate which we derived earlier. So, this is like same. So, we have kept q as here and w into l are the surface area of the tank. So, uh, this this we did earlier. So, surface area of the tank is l into w. So, if both are there. So, that means, the terminal velocity should be equal to q by a and which is actually the surface loading of the tank or overflow rate v 0. So, this is like we can keep it as v 0. So, we can write u t should be equal to v 0 for the target particle. 
for which we have a diameter fix and which is having a particular density. So, if both are known, we have a target particle which is known. Now, if the settling velocity of the particle is equal to or greater than the overflow rate, 100 percent of the particles will be captured in a horizontal sedimentation basin. So, as we did earlier, we are targeting that if suppose the what is this meaning that in the previous equation we find out v, v t is equal to if u t is greater than or equal to u 0 or v 0 sorry uh, overflow rate. So, under that condition this particle will settle down 100 percent uh, before actually it reaches out of the system. So, we have 100 percent uh, removal of the particles from the water whatever is the target particle for a horizontal sedimentation basin. And the same idea is expanded to the uh, uh, upflow clarifiers as well. So, that is unlike an upflow clarifier some of the particles within a V s less than V 0 uh, can also be removed. But this is the case ideally we will assuming that any target particle which is having a dense uh, part settling velocity greater than the overflow rate will 100 percent get removed. Now, what will happen to the other particle suppose the terminal velocity is not equal to V 0 suppose it is only 0.5 of V 0. So, uh, or overflow rate. So, under that condition at least if it is only 0.5. So, the target particles up to half of the height they will get removed. So, they will settle down above that they will not settle down they will escape, but all those particles which are up to this zone they will get captured. So, considering that particles have are having a settling velocity of only 0 0.5 V 0 entering uniformly into the settling zone figure shows that 50 percent of these particles those below half the depth of the tank still will get removed. So, this is there. Similarly, we can go further extend and one fourth of the particle suppose 0.25 V 0. So, one fourth of the particle will get removed in the settling if in the settling zone. So, uh, this is how we can calculate. So, there are some of the important points we can learn from this. One thing is that the terminal velocity should be or greater than the surface loading of the tank. So, if we can keep this otherwise vice versa we can do this. So, terminal velocity of the target particle is calculated. Now, we should design a tank in such a way that surface loading should always be less than the terminal velocity. If we can do this we will capture the all the target particles. Now, uh, whichever suppose 100 micron is the target particle. Now, above 100 micron also some of the particle will get captured because at least half the height. So, it is possible that we will capture up to 100 micron all the particles above that also will capture lot of particles. So, this is there. The surface area is more important than the height of the settling tan when we are designing any system. Higher the surface area, higher will be the removal of Effici removal efficiency and more uh, particles will get removed. All the particles which are having settling velocity u t greater than 0, uh, some of them will get captured, but uh, some of them will get removed also. So, there will not be 100 percent efficiency for target particles which are having uh, overflow rate greater than v 0. Some of the particles which are actually uh, up to half of the zone up to one fourth of the zone they will get removed still. For particles which are having u t less than u 0 only u t by v 0 fraction only will be removed. So, this is there. So, suppose the target particle is having velocity greater than 0. So, v 0. So, we calculate the ratio and the removal efficiency the percentage of particles removed for this condition will be divide will be like V t divided by V 0 into 100. So, this is how we calculate for a condition where the settling velocity is greater than the V 0. So, uh, this is there. Uh, 
uh, going further uh, we have a condition which is uh, we have a velocity which is called as scour velocity. So, what is scour velocity? Uh, it is like the maximum horizontal velocity through the tank which does not allows resuspension or scouring of the settling particles. Uh, what does it mean that suppose if we have very high horizontal velocity. So, what it will do is that uh, it will resuspend the particles from the settle zone. So, we do not want to keep that also. So, always when we are designing any sedimentation basin horizontal flow uh, overflow rate is one of the important criteria then we should also take care of the maximum horizontal velocity through which we should allow the water to enter into the system. Otherwise, if V h becomes more than this the particles which will actually settle down to the sludge tank they will also become resuspended uh, which is never desirable. So, that is why scour velocity or maximum horizontal velocity is very important and that can be calculated by this expression which is given here. So, this maximum horizontal velocity is like under root of 8 k rho p minus rho f f and then further divided by the, the bulk dense this density of the fluid and then it is a function of like diameter of the particle as well. Here f is called the Darcy Wisbach friction factor it is unitless and its value may range from 0 0.02 to 0 0.03. If we do not know it is better to keep the value highest possible so that we know uh, that our maximum horizontal velocity is the lowest possible. So, this is very important. Similarly, k is the cohesion constant that depends upon the material being scoured. So, uh, its value varies from 0 0.04 to 0 0.06. If we do not know, it is better to keep the value lowest possible. In the f case, it is highest possible. In the k case, we can keep it lowest possible because we want to have the lowest possible her maximum horizontal velocity. So, for sticky and interlocking matter uh, k is equal to 0.6 whereas, for ungrounded sand particles like it is k is equal to 0.4. So, we can calculate the scour velocity. Uh, so, now three important things have happened till now. We have a terminal velocity which is very very important to calculate. Then we have a overflow rate that is very important and from overflow rate actually we can calculate the area of cross section uh, surface area which is more important. So, Q will be generally fixed because we can tentatively if the flow rate is too high the amount of water getting generated in the plant is very high. So, we can divide we can have 3, 4 settling tanks, 5, 6 settling tanks like this. So, we have some idea of Q. Now, Q is known. So, only design factor is A and also during this Q calculation we can take care of the maximum horizontal velocity that should be allowed. So, three important factors terminal velocity, overflow rate, within overflow rate surface area is important and also depending upon Q we have to take care of the maximum horizontal velocity. So, that resuspension of the settled particle does not happen. So, three important things that are there in the settling uh, and sedimentation in the basics. Now, one question is given here a municipal wastewater plant is to be designed to treat a maximum flow rate of 60,000 meter cube per day. Now, the diameter of the particle is given as 200 micrometer k is given as 0.05 and the which basic factor is f is given the the particle density is also given it has been calculated. So, I in actual scenario this will be only the known thing then we have as a design engineer or something we have to determine this from the literature or we have to calculate this using various methods sophisticated instruments etcetera. Now, we have to assume also something. So, this is given in the problem, but in the actual case this condition we may have to decide by ourselves. So, we are designing a rectangular classifier here 
we are assuming that the ratio of length to width has to be kept greater than 6 overflow rate we are assuming that will keep at least 4 times the settling velocity. So, that whatever is the target uh, this particle everything of that gets removed and horizontal velocity is at most one third of the score velocity. So, we are keeping the horizontal velocity also much lower we are keeping the overflow rate very high so that everything settles down. So, we are assuming and there is some assumption with respect to length to width also that we are assuming. Now, we have to find out the dimension of the rectangular tank and determine the detention time. Uh, these conditions we can vary okay, and, and we can cross check with respect to uh, like uh, what will be the total cost etcetera. These things we have to decide from literature or try to get the values by uh, from some other source. Okay. So, this is there and this will be the actual condition which will be given by any, uh, any industry or otherwise. So, this is there. Now, we first calculate the horizontal settling velocity using this cow velocity. So, it comes out to be 0 0.08853 meter per second. So, everything is kept here. Now, the actual sorry horizontal velocity we are going to take is less one third of the score velocity. So, that has been taken. Now, the terminal velocity has been calculated and here uh, we put all the for fleet we are assuming to be the water. So, for that condition uh, here already 1.25 is the specific gravity of the particle. So, we are assuming for liquid to be 1 and under that condition the terminal velocity is found out. 5.44 into 10 raise to minus 3 meter per second and then we cross check that whether we are assuming this uh, using the Stokes law reason whether it is correct or not. So, Reynolds number comes out to be 1.088 so we can assume to be ok. Now, we are assuming overflow rate we are taking 3 times of the terminal velocity. So, it is calculated this is the overflow rate. Now, if W is the width and L is the length and H is the height of the rectangular basin. So, the W into H so that means width into height which is the like the cross sectional area of the section will be equal to like uh, the flow rate divided by the horizontal velocity. So, since horizontal velocity is fixed flow rate is already fixed we get the W into H is equal to 23 point 54 meter square. Now, going further similarly the surface area of the tank is equal to flow rate divided by overflow rate and that comes out to be 31.905 meter square. So, we calculate it. Now, since L by W was taken as 6. So, L by W is equal to what we do is that uh, we put the from here the term for L. So, from here L will be equal to 31.905 divided by W. So, this is there and we have assumed it to be 6. So, solving we get W once W is known we can calculate the L and once L is also known we can calculate the H. So, all these parameters we get the dimension. So, here certainly we have assumed this and but under all these conditions all the target particles will get removed. So, through this uh, we end this lecture, we will continue the settling section in the next lecture as well. So, thank you very much.